Fox 2 News at 5 starts now. Well, we begin with breaking news. The driver of a DDOT bus has been charged with hitting and killing a woman in downtown Detroit. And tonight we've learned that driver has been involved in several other crashes in recent years. 59-year-old Geraldine Johnson is charged with one count of a moving violation causing death. The victim, 67-year-old Janice Bauer from Gross Point Park, died after she was hit by the bus at the intersection of Griswold and West Congress on June 2nd. Johnson has been in many deadly crashes dating back to 2015. That's according to the judge. A high personal bond of $100,000 was set for Johnson. A Detroit woman is murdered. Her body set on fire. Now her fiancé is under arrest. And tragically, it was the woman's daughter who discovered her own mom's body. Tonight, she's speaking to Fox News' Jessica Dupnack, who joins us live with the story. Jessica, just devastating. I can't even imagine what this young woman is going through. At just 19 years old last week, she hadn't heard from her mom for a couple of hours. That was unlike her. She went inside their West Side Detroit home. Something just seemed off. That's when she found her mom in a back bedroom. She was deceased, and that 19-year-old would soon find out that it was her mother's fiancé that's been arrested in connection to her death. My mom was the most beautiful um, spirit. You can see that spirit has been passed on to daughter Kaya Smith. A smile, even though just last week she found her mom, Stacy Smith, dead, murdered in their West Side Detroit home. I found her. Um, she was laid unconscious um, in her room, and she had a burn mark on her leg. I touched her. She was, she was cold. And, um, at that point, I just I called the police as fast as I could. Kaya says their house smelled like lighter fluid or gasoline, and her mom's bed was partially burnt. An autopsy would later reveal 48-year-old Stacy was strangled to death. Her fiance was arrested by Detroit police this week. It really changed our life in a really drastic way, and um, I want her to know that like this is really. Like unforgiving. The fiance has not been charged yet. That's why we're not naming him. As of what I knew, he loved my mom so, and my mom really loved him. Like my mom was very excited. They had just got engaged on Memorial Day. Kaya says her mom's fiance lived with them for two years. It's very unexpected. Cause I've never seen him ever. You know, I've, I've seen arguments, and they were actually arguing that day, but I've never seen him put his hands on my mom or them get physical ever. Now Kaya, a 19-year-old junior at Grand Valley State University, stepping into a caretaker role for her 14-year-old brother. He's not taking it good. He's not. Kaya says she lost her best friend. My mom did everything for me. So it's kind of like I'm just kind of getting thrown out there, you know. You heard this story there, what Kaya smelled, that the house smelled like some kind of accelerant and that her mom was burned, at least on her leg and part of the bed. It does appear at this point that those burns were post-mortem and that whoever did this likely started a fire to cover up the crime. Now, this family is trying to pay for a funeral uh, for Stacey Smith. If you want to help, we'll put some more information on our website, fox2detroit.com. Reporting live on Detroit's West Side, Jessica Dupnak, Fox 2 News. Well, let's just hope someone steps up to help Stacy's family. Jessica, thanks for that live report. All new at 5, Detroit's mayor and police chief announcing a new plan to help stop violent crime in the city. A new partnership called Shot Stoppers will work with community groups to stop violence before weapons are actually used. Six groups picked by the city of Detroit will use Shot Stoppers to try to prevent crime in the area of their city. Police Chief James White says this could help solve some big problems. We are now actually able to test in our most violent neighborhood, this interruption of community engagement, this, this positive interruption to violence, using people on the ground, grassroots, mud roof folks who are there, who know the community, that can stop this senseless violence. If this is approved by city council, these organizations would create their own strategies starting in July. An elderly woman dies in a house fire on Detroit's east side. And investigators say it's because of something many people have on their homes, security bars on the windows. Fire crews responded to the home on Orleans Street just before 3 this morning. The fire chief says the 90-year-old woman lived there alone. By the time crews pulled the woman out, sadly it was too late. 
She was a, a sweet person. Um, I worked for her for years, taking care of her husband before he passed. And she was just a sweet person. Yeah. She was trying to get out. Right. Yeah. Right. That's sad. The cause of that fire is under investigation. Well, things are finally turning around uh, after the last couple days and uh, beautiful weather out there today. Yeah, beautiful weather for a wonderful person's birthday. We're talking about Taryn Asher turning 29 today, oh, yes. which is a big deal. It's great. No. So ha much fun. Happy birthday <laughs> to you, you Taryn. Thank you. I know it's a special You got day. me a very special cake. Maybe we'll bring it out and show. It's the most beautiful cake I've ever seen. I would like you to eat some. You can, <laughs> you can have some cake and eat it too. Rich Luterman, uh, we are expecting some more rain to come our way, and I know that uh, that's actually much needed. 29 candles on that birthday oh, cake, Taryn. Yeah. I really love that. Thank I love you. that. Uh, yeah, beautiful day today. Sun and clouds, comfortable temperatures, but nice to see the sun. We're watching some energy up over central Ontario that's going to come our way tomorrow and bring some more thunder showers likely to the area. Right now, all quiet, 71 degrees here, 76 in Lansing, a bit cooler near the water from Port Huron up to the tip of the thumb. How about live pictures from Mount Clemens? That's the Clinton River, and you can see some fair weather cumulus clouds, but plenty of blue skies out there. For the rest of tonight, comfortable down to 55. Now, tomorrow's not an all-day soaker, but a few thunder showers will come and go. Friday looks good, and then a beautiful weekend ahead. We're going to show you the seven-day Roop and Taren coming up in 10 minutes. All right, Rich, thanks so much. Well, Juneteenth became a federal holiday in 2021, marking the date when the last group of enslaved people in the United States learned that they were free. Ahead of June 19th, communities across the country are marking the day and its significance with cultural expressions of music, dance, and more. Fox News' Hillary Gold with more. I'm going to be telling African stories with some riddles, stories that teach you to be kind and be gentle and work hard, stories that teach you that in life we are like fellows in the same ship. ICU nurse George Obiabuchimno goes by fishmonger stories when he performs and passes on the rhythms and stories of his ancestors. Ghanaian, Liberian, Senegambian, Nigerian. <laughs> what, what are we talking about? Thank you very much. Well, uh, my name is George, born and raised in Kenya, but I have my, my branches in Detroit. But I tell stories from all over Africa. Your freedom is my freedom. Your chains are my chains. Today's point is to celebrate Juneteenth. Wednesday is Oakland County's first Juneteenth celebration. Elizabeth Dennison IV was the first African American to own property in Oakland County. And not just anywhere, but right here in Pontiac. We are lifting up her voice today, and we're lifting up all of the voices of those who truly looked at June 19th as a real day of independence for them. Because literally, tens of thousands of people centuries ago marked this day as the day that America fully lived up to its promise that everyone was created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And we all share them. And today we celebrate that reality in Oakland County and across our great country. The Juneteenth flag raised, singing, dancing, food reflection. How would you answer critics who may look at something like this as just simply symbolic when the metrics don't add, add up for those who are the descendants of slaves and say communities and some communities in, in our area? Yes, yeah, certainly. It, you know what? It, it, is, it is performative, but there's a place for performative uh, things because people need to see that we're honoring the history of all of our residents, all of our constituents, and, and for those who would uh, who would take issue with some of the things that are going on uh, in black communities, particularly Pontiac in, in particular, or in specific, you know, we can't, we'd be disingenuous to deny that those issues exist, but we can also take care of those things at the same time. Hillary Golston, Fox 2 News. Former President Trump sticking to the campaign trail just one day after pleading not guilty to 37 federal charges. It comes as experts weigh in on the impact the case could have on the 2024 presidential election. Fox's Madeline Rivera has the latest. Legal troubles are stacking up for former President Donald Trump. If convicted on federal charges involving the alleged mishandling of classified documents, he could potentially spend the rest of his life behind bars. But the 2024 Republican frontrunner appears to be leaving the courtroom behind while he is on the campaign trail. After pleading not guilty to 37 felony counts on Tuesday, he flew to New Jersey to make his pitch to voters. 
On November 5th, 2024, justice will be done. We will take back our country and we will make America great again. Trump's campaign says that fundraiser hauled in roughly $2 million. It's still unclear, though, how these historic federal charges will affect his bid for the White House. Is this groundswell from the base that says you're being persecuted, this is a political persecution, does it translate into votes? The 2024 election has prosecutors pushing for a speedy trial. Legal experts say the Justice Department has to follow a long-standing integrity policy. They have a policy not to take actions that could influence election. The first election, the primary, is in February. So that would put a trial in November. But the classified nature of the evidence could drag out proceedings, leaving some Republicans with time to weigh their options. I'd like to see it go through the system before I make any decisions. In the meantime, Trump is still assembling his legal team as we wait for an official trial date. In Miami, Mather Vera, Fox News.